you can quickly recognize this tissue here as being breast because there are nice labials, just like you see in breast, and there are nice ducts, like you see in breast, some of which, like here, are a little dilated or cystic. And you could see uh, the uh, connective tissue or stroma between labials and ducts. This is kind of a funny word applied to this case. This is called epithelial hyperplasia. Well, you know, most cells that are hyperplastic are epithelium, so it may sound a little bit redundant. But often, or usually in the breast, when they talk about hyperplasia, they refer to the fact of whether the ducts are hyperplastic, like you see here or here, or whether the labials are hyperplastic. In this case, it appears that perhaps both of them are, which may be why they use the word epithelial hyperplasia rather than ductal hyperplasia or lobular hyperplasia. And as you know, if ductal lap hyperplasia or hyperplasia within a duct, like you see here, uh, becomes atypical, it can give rise, give rise to ductal carcinoma in situ which can then infiltrate to be infiltrating ductal carcinoma. If, on the other hand, labules, like you see here, are hyperplastic, they could possibly give rise under the same stimuli, whichever cause cancer, to become atypical hyperplastic and then give rise to lobular carcinoma in situ, which may persist for many years, usually does. Uh, and could eventually, possibly, then infiltrate to the typical Indian file pattern of lobular hyperplasia. I'm sorry, lobular carcinoma in situ. But in this case, you could see the duct, rather than having a single uh, layer of epithelial cells, is filled almost entirely with epithelial cells. So this is hyperplastic. Notice that the duct here does not have any necrosis. And even though you could probably look at it long enough and say, well, I think this nucleus is a little atypical, uh, the lack of necrosis in the duct is a very, very, very reassuring finding. But notice even within the lobules, it looks like there's increased proliferation of cells. Uh, so this is what we would call uh, the stage of fibrocystic disease that has as a component hyperplasia as well. There's no doubt that there are cysts, like you see here, 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 here. There's no doubt that there's fibrosis. There's no doubt that some of these labules look nice and normal. There's no doubt that some of these ducts look nice and normal. There's also no doubt that these ducts, perhaps here and even along here, uh, are hyperplastic, but not malignant. And there's no doubt that it's, perhaps you're seeing that some of these lobules look like they're being hyperplastic as well. Whenever you have fibrocystic disease in which there is a component of proliferation of the epithelium, this goes into the category of fibrocystic disease that is higher risk than the fibrocystic disease in which there is no epithelial hyperplasia. So if you want to think of fibrocystic disease as being uh, good and uh, potentially worrisome, the good stuff wouldn't have any hyperplasia. You would just have these little cysts. The, bad, the worrisome stuff would have the ducts which are hyperplastic and labules. And even though that would not at all uh, be guaranteed to go into cancer, or even with a long amount of time, it is associated statistically with a higher risk for subsequent uh, malignancy. Thank you very much, but because this is an important cop, uh, concept, I'm going to go back here and uh, reaffirm to you that the normal duct should just have one layer of uh, columnar cells appear. It fills the entire uh, duct. And I'm also going to reassure you that labials should normally look like they have a nice uh, asini, perhaps, with a little connective tissue in between. But in here, there's pro epithelial proliferation here. This is what they call fibrocystic disease, uh, 
with an increased risk factor for carcinoma. Thank you very much.